I ain't mad at, at this you. point, what it is is what I, I buy. I mean, I'm not gonna talk about these detractors. I'm not gonna talk about their lies and words they say. I ain't mad at you. But they are just jealous. I'm the owner of a multi-million dollar company. And, and am I? Fucking weird, why is no, no, no? Don't ban him. Sturge is fine, his address. You're not getting that from me, bro. You're not getting that from me. I ain't mad at you. I'm not mad at you. Not at all, at all, at all, at all, at all, at all. I ain't mad at you. Not at all. Anyway, back to shit that, that, that matters. Why, oh, God damn, man, y'all gotta stop with this K-ass fucking uh, shit. Like, I get it. Motherfuckers saying what they gotta say about me. I'm, I'm, I'm totally aware of that. I'm not engaging. How do people listen to this? I, every time I watch I'm Eric July, like, you. scream at his audience. I'm I just ask myself, like, how do, how, do, how, do, how do people sit in the audience I'm and go, just continue to yell at me and call me gay shit, motherfucker. Just continue, I'm Eric. I love it. Absolutely you. fucking love it. How do people sit there and listen to this? There's no entertainment value at all watching this fucking retard spurg out at them uh, and call them racial epithets. It, it, there's no... Tony... There's not. Oh my God. Look at his balls. They are so big. He must be one of those gamer guys. Like, who understands them anyway? I say, what? Balls! Who's got the balls?
my balls. Balls! What's up, me bags? It's the often imitated, never duplicated, Tony TGD. Of course, I am joined by the lovely, the magnificent, my assistant for this adventure, this journey, uh, who just muted his mic, and so makes this whole entrance, this whole uh, ado that I'm giving him, really pointless if he's not here to answer. Uh, TJ Laser, what's up, TJ? What it is, is it is what it is. It's chaotic over here. <laughs> Uh oh, Finbar has to visit his mom and talk about his brother Matt. <laughs> Always uh, fighting on the internet. <laughs> yeah. Tony Stream gone rated G. I missed the hype intro. Uh, which is the hype intro? I don't, I don't, not sure. Not sure. Uh, Hail Rant Monster. Yeah, yeah. We got we got not a lot to talk about. Uh, it's actually a fairly, fairly boring day. I had to go get my taxes done. Man, uh, taxation is theft, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, unfortunately for you guys, it wasn't my theft. It was other people's theft because I got money coming back to me. That's what happens when you hire an accountant and do uh, creative bookkeeping, uh, we'll say. So I'm going to have myself a nice fat check uh, in a couple of weeks. Uh, hail everyone except for Grumpy. I agree. I agree. So I had to do that, which means I didn't really get to do a lot of prep work for the show. I know you guys don't realize this, but we do hours and hours of prep work. We run through this thing at least three times. We get everyone on the panel. We run through all the bits, all the segments. We uh, pretend like there's an audience, and we even throw in curveballs from this pretend audience. We do all of that for you guys, for you guys, so you get the best possible show. However, because I was doing taxes, couldn't do that today. And if I'm lying, I'm dying. Ain't that right, TJ Laser? That's right. Grumpy's asking, uh, what's my profile pic? I think it's, now's the chance to show him, at least. <laughs> uh, what's your profile pic? You mean this one right here? Yes. Uh, this would so be the story the behind this is, uh, yeah. I think there was one stream where I said, you know, the, the name Sturgis sounds like something... Uh, Jack Kirby would come up with for a monster. So I said, why don't I draw something called the Sturgis monster? And this abomination was born. <laughs> and this is what got me hired. It is. It's what got him hired, got him part of the team. Uh, it's a great image. The full image is fantastic. And uh, I can't wait till we get to the point where we can have Sturgis show up in the comic, the Sturgis monster. It's going to be great. Uh, as you can see, the name of the stream is Second Draft Blues. It's not really blues. I'm happy. I'm excited. We ran through the first draft, got the feedback from everybody. Uh, took that as, as, you know, the best criticism as I could. I took all the valuable criticism. There was some invaluable. Not valuable? Not. Invaluable is good. So not, not valuable. A set of valuable criticism that I had received, and I threw that in the garbage. Uh, we didn't need any of that. But there was some good criticism, and I, I've gone over this before. We added a page at the beginning of the comic. Uh, there is, uh, it's not an exposition dump, but there's a nice lore. Just right in that first page, you're going to get a, a ton of lore uh, about the world, about what's going on. You're going you're gonna to learn things, and you're going to understand what Frogman's role is in the world. Within the first page, that's how good we are at this stuff. Right, all this world building, right in the first page. Oh, this is the full image. There it is. Look at that. I will be comics in the chat. Hail. So this is for Grumpy's sake. I'm showing it again. This is the Sturgis Rap Monster, and our good Frogman over here fighting him in a sewer. Yeah. And and I just want to say, as as the um, creator of the Frogman and the overall head of the studio. Uh, a lot of these little things here, that, that's my, my uh, suggestion to add that pipe with the water and uh, the green water and all that. And TJ Laser, like a great artist. At Do what I tell them without question. Can you hear me, TJ? Yeah. 
think you cut off for a while. Or was that yeah, me? Yeah, that was me, because I'm looking at the little internet. We're, we're, it's snowing here for some reason. And it's fucking up my internet. Uh, Mike's out, Tony. Yeah. It is what it oh, is. Oh, no, they pulled up on laser. Yeah, so uh, it's snowing here. The internet's going in and out. It went out uh, right before we started the show. Uh, what I was saying was, some of the little things in the image, uh, the pipe with the, with the water and green water, some of the other things... Uh, my suggestions, you know, because uh, I see the greatness and then I help bring it out of the artist. Right? That's my job here. Hail, Sandman. Hail. Uh, I think the same can be said about everybody in the team. Uh, Finbar, George, Potion, everybody's doing their best. It's a wonderful experience being around you guys. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, so, our man here, TJ Laser. Uh, he really and that's why You know what the problem is, guys? I don't run the stream, so I can't really share anything. <laughs> I guess it's going to be a chit chat between you and us, uh, uh, you and myself, until Tony comes back. <laughs> yeah, a real professional outfit, uh, Finbar. God damn. We're going to wait until uh, Tony goes through the snowstorm. Man, this is a problem. Like, this is supposed to be an art stream, right? And I can't share anything because I don't run the show. Maybe Finbar. I don't know. Finbar, can you join us a little bit for these few minutes until Tony shows up? Yeah, I wish George would pull up. Then we could do a Joe King thing, sure. Now's my chance to talk shit about Tony. Hmm. Let me see. Well, all I can say is Tony's been a prankster these days and uh, he's been putting us through a bunch of troubles. But now he's saying that we're a drama-free group. We're moving differently these days. So I hope that he uh, <laughs> holds his end of the bargain on that. Yeah, yeah, there's Tony saying his net went out. Yeah, I wish I could, uh, Grumpy. Like, I have a screen shared and everything, but I'm not running the show. Like, I don't have permission to do shit. Maybe we should fix that one of these days. Hashtag drama free, that's right. You could use your phone, Finbar, yeah. Well, I guess it's because I'm the only one in the stream and I haven't shut anything down, so. Detective Wizard. <laughs> oh, shit, Red with the $2. Now can we stop pretending that we like Tony? <laughs> Backstabbing Red. He backstabbed Vito and now he's backstabbing Tony. Look at that. Stray Beans. Anyone see Sturgis get in a fight with an academic that has written multiple books about education theory? Like, what can he contribute despite schools suck? 
Oh, look at George here. Look at that. Here's the shilling. Tony, I can fix this problem. Give me your credit card info and the three digits in here. And wait 24 to 48 hours for results. Well, there you go. George with his shill right there. Yeah, I'm with you, Aaron. I blame all of this on Eric July. <laughs> I saw on Twitter um, somebody was like making fun of him for tilting his head backwards and showing his nostrils just to pretend that he's tall. But then Eric July is like, what, what the fuck? <laughs> Uh, Eric, you, you really should stop acting like you're tall. You're a manlet. It's true. And there he is, Finbar. Hey, TJ. Finally. <laughs> I, don't have, I don't have any desktop access, so I, I can't help you bring anything up. I'm out, I'm out at the minute. I'll stay till he comes back and we'll have a chat. So how's you? All right. Yeah, I guess we can talk shit about uh, our progress without spoiling things, of course. Otherwise, Finbar will uh, strangle me. Oh wait a minute! You are you present? Are you, are you sending me something? I can add, add that to stage. There we go. Yes, finally. Thank you. Yes. Now we're now. This is a proper frogman stream. Now we're rocking and rolling. Right. So this is um, Wizard of Wordplay's character, and he actually said when back when he made it, this was a blatant ripoff of Thor, and then he gave me the challenge to improve it. Oh, here's Tony. Finally. <laughs> You took your fucking sweet ass time. <laughs> he's still out. Look, he's still he's still, he's still out. Wonderful. Out. Well, just ignore him. We're still on the show then. Anyway, what, what? I took the challenge. Uh oh. When did you get here, Finbar? Are you are you streaming live from the bathtub now? Are you? I'm on my phone now because the, the I, I got to use the Wi-Fi on the phone. I can't stay. I got to go right. So you're back. Can you control stuff? Yeah. Um, no, I don't think I can. Okay, you want me to stay in control stuff for a bit? Are you rebooting? Yeah, could you? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Okay. Right, TJ, go on, man. All I'll right, I'll try to make this fast. All right. So this is how I improve the character. No, not that one. Jesus Christ. Ah. There, yeah. So the story is this is uh, Ragnar the Viking. And he happens to be immortal. And he's been living throughout all these days as a Viking. And I said, how, do, how can we improve that? I said, since he's living all the way until now, he adopted. So he became a Viker. There is a character similar like this uh, to this guy. Finbar pointed it out. Yeah, it's uh, uh, Thunderstrike, yeah. Thunderstrike. And guess what his name is? You guys will laugh at this. His name's Eric. Eric Masterson. <laughs> it's a combination oh, between yeah, Eric July and the Dick Masterson. <laughs> it's poetic, man. Isn't it? it is poetic. I'll try to browse this uh, quick. So this is Stray Beans. You guys remember the wolf hyena creature, right? Yeah. yeah, Stray Beans made the whole cover of Gar featuring the same creature. Look at this. This is beautiful, man. Approved by the comics book, uh, the comics gate authority. <laughs> GG, Geek Getaway, Gar of Pangea. 60 cents. Look at that. How much is it in UK? Go back. Scrolling, uh, zooming. UK, Zoom. 20 cents. We don't have cents in the UK, but if that's 20 pence, that's a good deal, man. I'll buy that. All new. More pages. <laughs> so this is the drawing it was based on. And now our good friend Samurai Snowman created this character. And his name is Gremlin Son. I asked him if I could uh, adopt this. You know, give him a little colors, give him some inks. He said, sure. And then he gave me the description of how I should color him. This is the result. Look at that. You Why can easily see like... this on a TV show. Is he a rabbit? 
This is a rabbit helmet, yeah. And these are like oh, why he got talons. chicken legs? Uh, oh, eagle, talons. eagle talons. They look you like chicken what? legs. Actually, part of me wanted to draw this because uh, I figured this might be Eric July's worst nightmare. It's a combination between the chicken and the rabbit. <laughs> yeah, there's tattoos over here. I'm telling you, uh, I all, I've been saying this for a while, but if uh, Samurai Snowman was born earlier, all his characters would have been on MTV. Uh, this, this is shit you see on MTV. It's giving me uh, that rabbit. It's giving me Donnie Darko vibes. Oh, yeah. I like it. Wait, let me show you. Yeah, you guys remember this drawing, right? Yeah. The Otto Gator, yeah. Yeah. Unlike some people, unlike people like Eric July, I do take criticism. And I've seen people talk and the uh, people saying, uh, giving me ways to improve it. And this is the end result. Look at that. It's also a sign of um, Frogman going through a little bit of an attitude adjustment because when we first started, we really wanted to stick to the bit of him being from the 60s, right? He's kind of a bit, he's kind of goofy. But since we joined the uh, Comics Gate, and we're all about the 90s and shit, everybody's all about attitude. I said he really needed a bit of that, right? And um, Finbar based Frogman's character on Peter Parker. In essence, especially Andrew Garfield's version. Specifically Andrew Garfield, yeah. Yes. And uh, you, we all know Peter Parker, Spider-Man, was a lot more like Deadpool back in the day before Deadpool stole his shit. There's even there's even one, the the Freddy Foster one, where he's been beaten up by Octogator. That specific drawing that I did was based off of a still from the promo for Amazing Spider-Man. I don't know if we yeah. ever showed the coloured version, did we? Have you got that to hand? Yeah. We've never showed that off, have we? I don't know if you guys No, we did. Out. We did show it. Oh, oh you mean with ones. the colors? Yeah. We, we showed it off with colors. Oh, we did. We, we did. Okay. So, yeah, this is um, a new beginning for Frogman. He's going to have a lot more attitude. You know what's funny, though? Uh, my nephew told me to give him Sonic Ice. The, the little Sonic scholar, yeah, because I was I, I didn't know what to do with him. I actually wanted to make his eyes blank, but then it looked like a Ninja Turtle, and then I was sitting there for a while. And then he said he just walked up to the screen and said, "Give him Sonic eyes." There's not. I don't think there's any getting away from the Ninja Turtle comparison just because of where his domino mask is on his face and all that as well. But, but these are this is like cool. a big spot. Yeah. But yeah, everybody will say it's a domino mask, and everybody will say it's a ninja turtle. But I mean, the it's spot is supposed to be a domino mask. Yeah. Ah, now here, I was asking permission from um, Tony and the crew to show panels that are, you know, completely oh, this changed. Is one of the, so this is one you're of the not cuts, going to see it? this in the comic book. Yeah. yeah. But I just wanted to show you guys. This, this is, was uh, before George got his claws in it. Exactly. So you have Gar. Out of context, we'll just say what's happening. He just smashed a rock with his big axe. And we leave it at that. He's trying to pull it out of the rock. <laughs> and now here, this is what I wanted to show you guys. This isn't complete. Once it's complete, I'll show it to you guys, of course. Probably next week. So we changed the age limit of uh, Frogman to make it a bit higher. In the beginning, he was kind of uh, kid-friendly, like you wouldn't see that many injuries. But this time... No, no, it, it's still kid-friendly. Uh, those are kid-friendly injuries. Yeah. yeah, like Dragon Ball when they censor it, right? They just remove the blood and then they keep the bruises. That's what they'll go with. Yeah, it's and I still... did tease that uh, Frogman has a berserk mode. It's still PG, right? We're not. Yeah, we're not above that. Yeah. So this is him getting pummeled by a mech. I didn't draw the rest of it yet. 
and mid uh, pummeling, he gets on berserk mode and he's uh, grabbing the fist. And you can see. Look, look, look at that. We, we, we got new guys on, on the day my internet decided to fuck up. Fantastic. Right? I love it. <laughs> you love to see it. So, yeah. The, um, I think one of the criticisms I I did take to heart from a lot of people, even our own detractors, by the way, even a bunch of assholes, was that uh, Fro Frogman doesn't have that much attitude. And I, he said, you know what? He really needs some. So, and, and as we can see, like, he looks a lot better this way, right? There aren't any assholes out there, man. Everybody's super nice, I've noticed. True. Everybody, everybody's... <laughs> Everybody's super chill, especially on Twitter. Frog, <laughs> Frogman's newest villain, Robo Arm, just the arm. Sure. <laughs> so look forward to me uh, at least finishing the rest of the the stuff that I need to draw, and then resuming back to finishing this. Yeah, thank, the, thank God, thank God you've got something to get on with at the moment because I'm. Uh, I'm going to be away a while, man. <laughs> Damn. That ends our segment of sharing art. Hey, Tony, are you back? Because I've got a bounce, man. Are you in control? No, I, I, I can end the show. That's about all I can do. How here. long is your How long is your computer take to boot up? I, I rebooted the the internet. Just not working. There's just no internet. No. Shit. Yeah. I would show you, but then the reflection would show my face, and then uh, that would be bad. And then it would it would knock everybody down, everybody down with handsomeness. Yeah, it would ruin the mystique. Can't, can't have that. Yeah. yeah. All the ladies in the audience would, would then throw their panties at the screen, and it'd be a whole mess. Well, I've got nothing to show you guys. So, I mean, I can show you my cock if you want. Oh no. no! I've already seen that like don't, three times already so this fucking, week. Hey, don't be so quick to say no, TG. I don't like how quick you said no there. Uh, yeah. Well, they don't want the stream to be demonetized. That's for you. Don't, sure. You don't want to end. You don't want to end on that, do you? You don't get anything else to show me, TG. <laughs> yeah. Fifty-six K warning is saying he wants anime <laughs> hour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like it. You know, if it wasn't for Tony's internet, we would have ended this segment and then went back to the usual detracting. But it is what it yeah, is. Yeah, we were we were gonna go over the savage salvage, whatever the hell it is, uh, PI announcement. Uh, Eric did some other announcement about the Ripazine, and there's a whole bunch of stuff for us to go over. But well, we if, can't if, do TJ nothing. Can, if TJ can share it, I can I can put it up on screen, and then I I mean I don't know I can then I can bounce and it will still be on screen, won't it? No, once you bounce Progress. it, it'll be it'll be awesome. Yeah. It'll be gone. Damn. Damn, man. I wish I could hang around, guys. I can't. <laughs> I really can't. Uh, I'm already. Can do this. Fuck them whole ass roads, man. I can. Uh, I guess we can share our plans moving forward, and then. You know, Not uh, fooling a libertarian. Is that all you can do, Tony? Is just play those? <laughs> yeah, it, it didn't even play right on my end. I was, I was oh, can, can you not? Oh, uh, Wizard of Wordplay is saying, "Can you make me a mod or whatever?" Like, uh, it won't help. No, I, I I can't do that. It won't help. Anyway, I was saying before you interrupted me with the whole ass roads. Um, we can just share our plans moving forward, and then. Keep this a short and nice stream. We don't have no plans. My, my plan moving forward is to be, be no drama, drama free. I was told that my life would be a lot happier uh, if I just stopped getting involved in so much drama. Two days. I think uh, this is God's intervention. He's like, hey, let me mess up your stream just in case. You were going to talk about Eric July. Let me just uh, screw up your internet. That way you, you can't do that. So you think I'm that's thinking, what it is? You think it's karma coming back to this? I think so. Uh, right. yeah. <laughs> Internet free, more like Wizard of Birthday saying. 
Yeah. Uh, so I don't, I don't know what else going on with you. You know what? I'm gonna go try to reset the router. How's that sound? Yeah, right. sounds good. Sure. Then uh, maybe maybe we can salvage this. We could uh, pi salvage, salvage the salvage. PI. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tony did take a no drama stance during the Miko. I remember that. Sad oh, in the chat. Hail. Uh, Tony is having uh, internet problems. So uh, by by this time of this show, we'd be doing detracting, but we don't have content <laughs> without Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Grumpy is saying, could it be a sign for us to return to drama? Hmm. Nah, he's that, that's right. You, you guys got nothing without me. You guys are, are boring, un uneventful. You guys got nothing. I I'm the whole show. The whole show is all about me. You guys are just extra. Hey, we've been busy drawing the comics. So they <laughs> there really wasn't much to share, except some of the fan art. It is weird though. There are days where we're flooded with fan art, and then there are days where like nothing happened at all. I guess people are busy these days. And the salvage PI, Eric July with his names again. Dreadful. Who's salvage PI? So this is uh, Eric July's uh, PI detective type of character what and title is that what title is this character is this is getting his own title and it's in the ripa zine the magazine right. <clears throat> i think he's going to do a few panels and it's going to feature this character eric july has been trying to prove this entire time that he was trying to make a detective story out of iceland and he made this right. character just to prove that apparently that's what i'm gathering has he got his own uh Document card with disconcerting. Yeah, uh, I, I bet, yeah, eventually he'll get a document card. Sure. Where is the guy? Is the guy except? Is he or is he just a guy? I think he's going to be just a guy. All right. That could be cool. Give it a chance, man. Give it a chance. Just like we give everything else a chance. We'll give that a chance. Depends who's writing it. What if Eric July is the one writing it? Then we'll still give it a chance. <laughs> how, how bad can it be, Shirley? Share, share which art, Grumpy. Share the art once more. Which one? Oh, the Salvage PI. All right. I was blocked uh, by Eric July, so this might be tough uh, sharing it. You were blocked by him. When did you get blocked? I don't know. The funny thing is I was blocked before uh, <coughs> by the Soska sisters, way before Eric July. See, I don't often get blocked by many people, just people that run their mouth. Usually, uh, I can't talk about stuff like this. It's drama. <laughs> Well, I mean, I can. I can kick Tony, I suppose. And then I can see what I want. How do you do it then? How do you, have you got a workaround where you switch accounts and is that how you do it? Uh, yeah, it's kind of a headache. I'm going to have to do that. No alt accounts. We're, we're not about drama. Drama free. No, no, you, but you, how do you do it then, Tony? I don't. I don't do it. People send no, me but pictures. How do you see? How do you see what's been said by somebody that's blocked you? I don't. They just block me, and that's the end of it. Right. And then, like I said, if something happens, people will send me pictures or whatever. Yeah, I suppose. All right. Uh, let me see. I think this is. Uh, we're reset now. I think we're good to go, gentlemen. Right. All right. Uh, While that's yeah. happening, we can react to this uh, little trailer here. One minute. Right, Tony, have you got control? Because I'm going to have to bounce. No, no, not yet. All right. Oh, uh -oh. damn it. It went out again. <laughs> it, it literally went on and then just went back out.
Right, I'll, I'll stay for a bit just to get through this, and then I really got to go. Just for this, yeah. We'll try not to make jokes. We'll just keep going. Oh, uh, there's no sound. There's no sound. Well, shit. Oh, you guys are really, really good. See what happens when I, when I when my internet goes out. The show just breaks down. You guys are terrible at this. Now, hopefully, this doesn't happen on Sunday with uh, Jimmy Reyes and the fellas on our new show, The Nerd Hangover, where I go with a, a bigger group of uh, nerds to discuss things. You know, a more sophisticated, group, yeah. if you will. Yeah, because I uh, I I gave you my word I'd be here controlling the show for you if everything went wrong, didn't I, Tony? Yeah, you did. <laughs> Fucking asshole. <laughs> Right, I'm going to have to go, Jed. So I'm sorry. Uh, you know, whatever you do from here on out, it's up to you. All right, <laughs> right. take it, take hey, it talk, easy, right. Right. right? Talk to you soon, guys. 42 people watching us. What a disaster! Uh, shoot somebody for me. I will. Don't worry. Oh, I'll be shooting plenty for you. All right. I'll be Don't thinking of you when I'm doing it. No blinks. Later, guys. All right, take care. All right, I think I'm back. Yeah, hold on. And kick out the other me and then get my headphones on. Don't say nothing, TJ, because I can't hear you. All right, I think we're good. Are we good? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Hopefully, uh, we're back on track. 45 people watching this disaster. Guys, uh, thank you uh, for just hanging with us as, as we went through this together. It was, it was a journey together. They say tragic experiences can bring people closer together. I feel like the 45 of us are now closer. We're bonded over this disaster. Uh, all right. Pretend this is the start of the stream. That's right. Hey, what's up? Me yeah, guys? there we go. <laughs> uh you I'll sound even better the time stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, I sound better because I was using my phone, and that's why I was, it, you know, the cheap phone mic and all, all the uh, stuff. But now I'm on the. You know, if I had mic. more control over the show, we would have actually done a few things already. But I I, I oh, realized well. that TJ, but uh, Streamyards only lets me give one other person control, and I gave that to Finbar a long time ago. Unless you want to pay another two hundred dollars, uh, so you can have control uh, temporarily. Yeah, I didn't think so. That, that, that silence says it all, guys. He doesn't want to pay for control. <laughs> so you showed off all those pictures. Uh, did you tell everybody how you're, you're uh, working on uh, Gar One Shot? That's right. How's that going? Going good? Two more panels. And then I have to wait for Finbar to send uh, more pages for me to do. No, I'm just talking about the Gar stuff. How's the Gar stuff doing? Forget the regular stuff. How's the Gar stuff? Is it, is it up to your standard? Did you enjoy the story? As oh, I yeah. It out? Yeah, yeah. It's a nice, I think simple little story. Two drawings I really enjoyed inking was the one with the Aztec temple and one and another one involving Gar. I won't say what it is. But I think the most fun I've had because... I don't know. I know what we're right, what we're creating is kind of schlock, right? But there are times really what you end up looking at is sort of almost high art, you know. Like uh, there are times where you you've drawn something and then you're like uh, you end up staring at it for a few hours after being done with it. There were two situations I had uh, this happened to me with, and that was the Aztec temple and one drawing of God. <laughs> oh, it's just starting. I missed that really good Taylor Swift song. Damn it. Yeah, she did. Taylor Swift is awesome. I love me some Swifty. Uh, one day, uh, me and Taylor are going to run off and get married. Uh, only if Melanie Mack's okay with it. If she's okay with a uh, polygamous relationship. Me, Melanie Mack, Taylor Swift running off together into the sunset. It'll be glorious. 
All right, let's let's meet Salvage, Pi. So I'm interested. Uh, I don't know about you, TJ. I'm interested I, as a writer, someone who writes, who's uh, doing all the heavy lifting. You know, you guys are just drawing pretty pictures, uh, but I'm I'm doing all the writing, all the heavy lifting. I'm creating the world in which you are playing in. Uh, I'm making a sandbox for you, TJ, if you will. Okay. So, uh, with that, I, I always like to hear other people, you know, how they come up with things, you know, their ideas, uh, just to see. I don't have a, a um, PI uh, in the works, so I don't have to worry about accidentally stealing ideas. But let's find out about Salvage in this uh, 1 minute, 26 second trailer here. So far, you've been introduced to several characters with their own unique abilities and aspirations. Isom, AlphaCore. Yaira, and many more populate the rip. I love how he gives you three and then he just doesn't name the other three. Like, and, you know, and the rest. It's like Gilligan's Island, you know. Yeah. Isom, Alpha Core, Yaira, and the rest. And the rest. Here at Ripperverse Island. Come on. Which is kind of sad because Blood Roots really should have been one of the main ones. Yeah, Gooding. I don't know what, what he was thinking with Gooding. Uh, but yeah, definitely Blood Ruth. Uh, Horseman's another one. He, he's instantly, he instantly just shut up. <laughs> he took Dick's funky music. Yeah, he did. Ripperverse. Heroes and villains roam this affluent city of Flores Park, Texas. But what about the private citizens that need something aside from the muscle of a superhero? Well, that's where he comes into play. Meet Salvage, often referred to as the Salvage. Often referred to as the, the salvage. salvage. The oh salvage. God, <laughs> it just sounds so stupid. The salvage, uh, yeah, the salvage. See, it would work, right? If he was like meet uh, Rick Salvage, often known as the Salvage, right? But just meet Salvage, known as the Salvage. Like meet Bill, known as the Bill, right? It's like if you have a full name, if you give me his full name, then giving him a nickname makes sense. But when his name is just like one, like Madonna, you don't really need the. Like, he's the. No, like Eric July, that's that's his actual first name. Yeah. Salvage. Like like Cher, you don't refer to Cher as the Cher. She's just Cher. Yeah. We all know she's one name. Madonna. The Cher. Sunny and Cher, sure. <laughs> yeah, the Sunny and Cher. The Sunny and the Cher. <laughs> what the salvage? Yeah, could you imagine? It's like. Could you imagine the conversation? Like, hey, did you hear what Salvage did? Salvage? You mean the Salvage? Yeah, the Salvage. Not the other Salvage that everybody thinks, you know, confuses them with, but the Salvage. The one and only. But also, there's another one, apparently, that we have to put the in front of this. It doesn't make no sense. Uh, so, like I said, if it was like Dick Salvage, and he's like, or, or they call him the Salvage. Or if he had a cool name, like if it was Savage, like... Johnny yeah. Savage, known as the Savage, right? Because like that sounds cool. He's the Savage, but the Salvage, he's the guy who goes the in the salvage. bay and like he he gets the ships that are like sunk in the bay. The Salvage guy, you know. Actually, Snowman brought up a good point. The Salvager, you know, like the how um, Frank Miller came up with the character called the Fixer. Yeah. Mister Salvage is a thousand. Yeah, Mister Salvage. Yeah. But this is Eric July being afraid of making superhero names for some reason. The Salvager would have worked. Well, it's not, you don't even need it. If it's like a PI, right? It doesn't even have a PI name, Salvage. Salvage is more of a superhero name, right? It doesn't yeah. fit the character. Superman Eric PI. Just, just like, <laughs> he went to Google. Like, after the ISO thing, he just started Googling. Like, no, that's taken, that's taken. Like, what's what's not taken? Salvage? That's not taken. Let me take that. Let me make the most bizarre name possible. So that nobody gets on my ass. <laughs> also, he's wearing a weird, like... He's got what appears to be a shirt and tie, but also a um, a vest. The vest, he's yeah. He's got the tie inside the vest, but also a jacket. It's a weird combo. It's a weird combo. A well-seasoned private investigator that operates within the city limits of Flores Park. A dapper man he is. But a dapper man he is. Is he fucking taking notes from Suit on the way he talks? <laughs> A dapper man he is, I did diddly say. A dapper uh, man he, he is. Uh, he only operates in Flores Park. Why? 
his, his, his like PI license only goes in, in the forest park? Makes no sense. This could have been his chance to expand a little, right? Uh, like three piece why, suit why are is what only, it's called. Why are only Morphica somewhere in Florida and everybody else happens to be in Florist Park? Also, why is he wearing a fanny pack? Yeah, that's not a detective thing to wear. Also, also, also. Okay, so this part of his vest, I take it, it almost looks yeah. like it's going through the the uh, the belt because it's like right on top of the belt. I can see the line of the belt. Yeah, go like the, the, the line yeah, of the belt right? goes goes they through didn't right erase here. That. Yeah. So that's a mistake, uh, right there. That's that's how autistic I am. You show me this, and then instantly I'm like, that doesn't look right. Uh, also, why has he got a T? Shouldn't it be an S for salvage, or is it T for the? Oh no. The salvage. Unless it's a T for Texas, I guess, because it looks like these might be horns coming off of it. Like it's probably Texas. A... But even that's stupid. Like, you you want to make him unique, right? What, like he had a big S for salvage, or like a gun, or like even like a magnifying glass on there. Right, something that's only uniquely salvage. Uh, also, where the hell is his crotch? This, this is a weird question. Oh, yeah, to ask. as usual. Yeah, that's how it is with the Ripoverse. No boobs, you no got like crotch. A, Cause you got this line, that this like light, so it's like okay, where his stomach is here, but this belt, so the belt is here, right? So I would imagine his like his crotch shouldn't be that far down. Like, is his crotch way down here? <laughs> like, why is he wearing his belt way like like? He pulled his pants all the way up. <laughs> yeah, it's like a really old private eye with his pants up to his nipples. <laughs> Because this line uh, indicates that it's still one thing, right? Like, so this would be the like where his crotch would be, presumably. So why is his belt? Why is this way up here? Then what's this? <sighs> uh, that's one feminine hand pose too. Look at that. A flatness. Ericsson has more of a bulge. Yeah. Uh, should be behind the belt. Yeah, yeah I agree. I agree. And again, I, I'm trying to be nice. This is this is this is me being nice and not no no drama. No drama. But he's no slouch. His line of work is unpredictable, so he's very handy with the steel. But he doesn't Oh, he's very handy with the steel, if you know what I mean. Gotta earn your keep. Eric, you you listening to fucking regulators? Uh. His work is unpredictable. Yeah. Kind of he's, he's a PI. What, what? Just take on any investigative job. Certain requirements must be met. What are the... That's always the stupidest thing, guys. If you're building a PI character, uh, you can't... Okay, so... If he's a private investigator, that means he's worked for hire. But if he's only taking certain cases, then he also can't be rich. Right? Because he's got to be, like, struggling. Like, like he's putting his ethics above his financial gain. Therefore, he doesn't have a lot of money and he's got to run down office and he's barely scraping by because he doesn't just take any job right so you can't show him like all decked out and like he's got all this money and he's got this huge fancy office and because uh, then now he's just like some like dude just, just like bored like oh i'm just bored and i just like private eye like you know for the fuck of it that is not dapper either <laughs> <laughs> I'm with so Chris he's Bacon. he sounds like he's yeah he's talking about ripperson no, Rick, Chris Bacon, in, in there, there's a music video. There's a song. It's Regulators. Um, Warren G uh, has a song. And at the beginning, they talk about you got to be handy with steel. And that's exactly what Eric July said. The way he said it was exactly uh, like in, in the, in the uh, song. Those, well, you'll have to read it to find out. The also, I'm very worried because Eric July... Uh, is th it's a 13 page story, right? About this brand new character. So you're going to introduce this character and then you're going to uh, obviously he's a PI, so you're going to introduce a a a mystery of some sort, uh, something that he needs to like use his detective skills to detect. Yeah. And you're going to wrap that all up in 13 pages. Hmm. I see what That'd he did with tough. 90 pages of Isom. Exactly. 
Uh, unless it's gonna be a cliffhanger. Unless it's gonna be like a, a weekly, like or a monthly, like every month you gotta you gotta get a new issue of Ripazine to find out the continuing adventures of Salvage PI. Right. That could work. And, and here's the other thing, right? So he goes, uh, we're we're introducing Salvage. Uh, here, well, uh, I think he says in the video. Well, let him, let him see. The story is from myself, Eric July, with art from veteran Art Sears. Find Salvage's 13-page introduction in the first ever Ripperverse magazine for just $7. This story is unlike anything we've told so far in the Ripperverse. It's a character that fits in a much different genre from the other characters. Also, I don't know if you noticed. Yeah, hold on. Let's see if they show the image. Better come on, show the better image. Uh, so we have costume, another, the usual Ripper verse problem, right? The vest yeah. changed. <laughs> not, not just the vest, but also the belt. It's hard to the see. Belt and he's missing, and the, he's face. missing the, the fanny pack. Uh, so it's $7, the magazine, right? Here's what doesn't make any sense to me. The magazine is 7 He says, but you can get it free with a membership to the channel, which is $5, right? So... Wouldn't, if he wants more memberships, wouldn't he push that more? Like, hey, get the membership because it's only going to be five. And he shouldn't be offering this at all as part of the, the uh, Yaira campaign, right? Just as part of the memberships to get people. So they get the memberships, they get the Ripazine. Uh, if not, then he should say, hey, well, the membership is $10. You can only get it in the $10 limit or you get 7 bucks here, right? There's got to be a reason for you to have one over the other, the, the price difference, right? So in a much different genre from the other characters and if the audience responds well to this perhaps the salvage could even get his own ongoing series so he says if the audience responds positively to this right here's the thing you're putting it in a a uh, a book that's already like a, a ripazine right so how is he going to gauge the audience response to this exactly Right. I'm still baffled over the fact that these magazines are also CGC graded. Yeah, you get the CGC that's, graded one. That's crazy. But I just want to know how he's going to gauge like this response because um, we've seen like with uh, with Alpha Core, with Isom, uh, and we're probably going to see the same thing with Yaira. There's not going to be a lot of videos. There's not going to be a lot of people talking. There's probably going to be more haters talking about it than, than positive people. No, if, so if Sturgis what... makes enough videos about it, then that's the sign. If our biggest simp says they'll pay more money, yeah. there you go. Yeah, Bruce. It depends on how many <laughs> magazines Bruce will buy. Yeah, if, if Bruce buys more than one, then it's a hit. And if not, we gotta go back to the drawing board. All right, there was another video that I wanted to watch. Um, the three reasons why you should pre order Yaira because I haven't pre ordered Yaira. I don't know if you've pre ordered Yaira, I have not. And which is strange because the first three campaigns, I pre-ordered them day one. Uh, but this one, I didn't pre-order because it said it wasn't even ready yet and it wasn't shipping for a while. And I was like, ah, I could wait a couple days. Right? And here we go again with the, the open mouth. Yeah, the, the, the hippo mouth. <laughs> buy this to find out if you want to buy that. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's just weird. It's a weird thing. Uh, what I would do. And, and, and maybe, you know, I'm not a businessman like Eric July, but I, what I would do, I would just give away the 13. Like, it, put it on your, like, members only uh, community page, right? Uh, one page, put one page a, a week. And then at the, you know, after 13 weeks, you get the whole story and, you know, you get people who uh, will jump in for the membership. So you'll get more memberships that way. Uh, people will get the story and then you'll be able to get feedback on it uh, at a page by page basis, right? I think I think that would draw more attention to the salvage, uh, but hey, what do I know? Well, let's hear why why we should pre-order Yaira. I'm Eric July, the founder and owner of the Ripperverse and the creator of Yaira, and these are my top three reasons why I think you should pre-order Yaira. Number one, the first reason. All right, so right off the bat, uh, you shouldn't say these are your reasons why I should buy something. Right, that's bad salesmanship. If I want to get you to buy something, I don't say, hey, this is why I think you should buy it. I would say, this is why you need it. 
This is why yeah. you can't miss it. All right? Because you're biased. Marketing I know you're biased. Yeah. Yeah. You got to sell me on this. Why I need to have this. I, I can't miss it. But let's see. Number one. Like, I know you're oh. convinced, but you have to convince me. Yeah. Also, you should do this in reverse order with number three first. It's countdown, right? Everyone, though, you don't count up the three. Like, number one, you, you go, this is your third reason, and then your second, and then this is the definite reason. Like, if those the other two number didn't one you, reason, right? It yeah. has to be saved for last. So, we're going we're gonna to shoot our load early with the number one reason. Reason has to do with the character. Sure, I'm a little biased, but there's a reason why she became a fan favorite so quickly. So far, because she was a white oh, lady. Of course. Yeah, exactly. But we know nothing about her. So how is the character? You need to buy this comic about a character that has had no real impact on any of the stories for the character that you don't know nothing about. I You've been introduced to Isom, who was once a hero, and though reluctant at first, he's finding his way back into the game. And Alpha Corps is also a team that is generally trying to do good and fend off evil. As you've probably heard me state before, though, Yaira is a wild card, and is she good? Is she bad? You obviously. I don't think he knows what wild card is. He keeps using that, and I don't wild think he card. really knows. It's a wild card. Uh, she's not a wild card. Uh, well, Joker is a, a wild card. Right, Joker's a wild card. You don't know what the Joker would do at any moment. He could do anything. That's a wild card, right? Someone who who can go good to bad. Deadpool. Deadpool's kind of a wild card. So, you know, they even say in the comics like you hire him, but that doesn't guarantee that he's going to keep working with you by the end of the mission, right? He could suddenly get hired in the middle of the mission by Doctor Doom, and then now he's yeah, against. It doesn't you, right? guarantee him actually finishing the job. <laughs> yeah, but Yaira is not a wild card. She has a purpose. She has a reason from my understanding, to what she's doing, right? She has her own goals, her own motivations, but it's not random. It's not just wild, as it were. You realize it's a lot more complicated than that if you've read Isom number one and number two. She clearly isn't... There's clearly nothing in Isom one or two that shows me anything of her personality or her wild cardness. She she is running from Alpha Core, gets slammed into Avery, fights Avery because she thinks he's one of the police... And then fucks off, and that's the end of her interactions. And then Isom 2 just mentions the Isom 1 thing, and then Alpha Core doesn't even mention Yaira. So. Trying to wreak havoc, but she did drop Isom onto a car. Yaira number one. I love this. Is she a hero, a villain, a Slavic, Icelandic? He's like, like as if slamming Isom into a car is such an important thing. That's probably why he's so obsessed with that scene. Uh, wild card for characters who you don't know what they'll do. Yeah. And Grumpy, you know what the funny thing is regarding Yara being a villain? I remember Ripa Goldpost saying that uh, Yara is a villain. Hmm. I don't know. If this is somebody obviously close to Eric July. Well, uh, let's not kid ourselves. But this shows that they're ignorant, you know? They're like they, they have no idea what the fuck they're doing. Yara is a villain. They're all villains. Uh, Krista did a nice job in a cosplay for not having a ton of time. Mint will do well also. I think... Uh, Krista Nova had plenty of time because I think she had a uh, heads up ahead of time. I don't think it's a coincidence that one of the Friday Night Tights, the the lady, Krista Nova, from Geeks and Gamers, uh, happened to just decide to dress up as Yaira. Right? Oh, yeah, because nobody else would. So it might as well be her. <laughs> yeah, why did she uh, become the most popular character? The Ripa stands have no fucking taste. I don't know. Uh, it's really, again, I'm trying to be nice here. I'm not trying to... Uh, pick personal attacks on anybody, but there's really nothing to the character for you to latch onto to be like, yes, this is interesting. Uh, Darren has a little characterization. You're like, oh, okay, this is a bad guy. He's kind of an asshole. He does his own thing. I can see him being popular. Isom, even though you don't learn a lot about him, you, you still, you learn a little, right? Uh, Alpha Core, they get a whole book. Uh, Ricky Retardo, I think, is a fan favorite, in my opinion. Uh, but Yaira, we don't know shit about her. Except for she's a wild card. One finally gives more context to this beautiful yet dangerous character. Number two is obviously the writers in Jen and Sylvia Saska. You all. That's not selling me. <laughs> Imagine if I'm new and I have no idea who the fuck these two are. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but Krista is, is in reason? Friday Night Tights. Uh, X-Ray Girl got the Friday Night Tights. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. 
Jen and Sylvia Saska, I don't see how. Okay, so if this was a horror book, right? It, them writing Blood Ruth, that would sell me on that because that's a horror book and they're horror uh, filmmakers, right? So there's a connection there. Uh, Black Widow is the only comic I know that they wrote for Marvel for the mainstream, and I don't see how Black Widow and Yaira are compatible. Uh, Black Widow, spy, spy stories, Yaira, cosmic being, kind of cosmic-y stories, right? It's like, they're not in the same genre. They're not in the same field, same family. All know the story that they wrote for another company that introduced me to them. So if I wasn't going to be the one that wrote Yaira, it had to be someone that was familiar with handling these types of characters. They were per What type of character? <sighs> oh, <A> woman? God. <laughs> a woman character? Is that what it is? They know how to handle a woman Apparently. character. So what did the, it... the Soskas write? Let's see. Two killing nuns? Yeah, yeah. Again, again. Black Widow? If, if, uh, if that's I about was, it. Uh, if I was going to have somebody write Gar, right? So, oh, we're going to hire a writer to write Gar. I wouldn't hire uh, Dan Slott, right? He's written Spider-Man and stuff. That, that, I wouldn't, that wouldn't translate. I would go and get someone who wrote Conan or like a Tarzan. Or something like that, right? Oh, this is, yeah. you know, these would transfer, these these kind of uh, writing skills. You know, I'm not going to hire someone who wrote Silver Surfer or The Hulk or, or Doctor Strange. Because those are in different genres. They're all superheroes, but it's, it's a different type of superhero, right? Again, Black. I don't see how the writing on Black Widow, which wasn't even that good from what I'm hearing. I haven't read it personally. Uh Perfect for that role. I say all the time, though the story is very much a Yaira story, I could have never come up with this. It's so. Well, it's possible that they're um, they're, they're not, not really twins. No, no, they're, they're not just... identical twins. They could be yeah, not identical. Twins. Yeah, right. Uh, they could both be female, and they could be twins, but not identical. They look close enough because they're sisters, obviously, and they're more or less the same age, right? It's like when you have twins, like one's a boy and one's a girl, and you're like, oh, they look similar, but they're not identical, obviously, because one's a boy and one's a girl. Except for these are both girls, presumably. So unique. There's a reason why the sisters are so enthusiastic about this book. They put their heart and soul... Because you're paying them. I'd be enthusiastic about the book if you paid me, Eric. Exactly. Oh, in it, and it really does show in the actual story. And number three must absolutely be Deborah's art. She was... A no. It's not... Uh Again, those three reasons not selling me. So you should buy Isom because, or you should buy Yaira because of Yaira, because she's a character in the in the story. Guys, buy this story because of this. Yeah, character. That's literally this entire video. That's all he's been saying. Also, the Saskas are writing it, which again doesn't sell me. They're not legendary writers. They they haven't put out any books within the Ripperverse. We're like, hey, did you see what they wrote here? Now we're now they're writing Yaira, right? I mean, you could do that for Blood Ruth. If Yaira is a good comic, then you could say, hey, they wrote Yaira. You're probably like Blood Ruth, right? But uh, so far, they've done nothing for you. And the Black Widow book was a while ago. And I don't think they've written anything that's transferable skill-wise uh, between Yaira and... they had an editor yeah. for the uh, yeah, Black the, Widow book. They had an editor. They had uh, pre-established characters, a pre-established world. Uh, it's a, a completely different experience, right? I can make a Hulk story, and uh, I know the Hulk lore, I know his mythos, I know the characters that he interacts with, how he interacts with them. It would be a lot easier for me to write an incredible Hulk story than a brand new character where I'm just I'm just shooting from the hip, right? I don't know what's going on. I'm creating it as I go along, essentially. All right. And of course, Deborah's done nothing either. She's done no mainstream books. I don't think she's done any book... Um, and not to pick on her, not to say that she, you know, she could knock it out of the park. Who knows, right? Uh, From what I hear, all she's point. been doing is covers. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, she, she could, she, yeah, she could knock it out of the park. But you're trying to sell me on it, and you have nothing that she's done to sell me on it, right? It's like, I got, I got this new song coming out, and it's got this singer, and she's brand new, and you're like. Yeah, but that's not how's that sell me? That's a, you know, you're like, hey, I got Beyonce on it. Like, okay, you sold me, right? She's an established talent. Deborah Kareed is not an established talent, so you're selling me on something that's not there.
already extremely talented before we brought her on, but we brought on an art director in Kanan White, and he's an unbelievable teacher in addition to being an artist. He's elevated every single artist that does interior work. That's it. You didn't okay, sell me on Carito then. Yeah, there's, there's two things wrong with that, right? One, and, and like EBS said, Canon White, Canon White, uh, if, if he's going to do that, you might as well just hire him to do the art. If he's going to sit there and babysit them and teach them how to be artists, right? Uh, and two, and this I think is the most important thing, uh, Canon White is going to teach them, elevate them in the Canon White style, right? They're not going to develop their own style it's gonna they're gonna be doing things the way canaan would do them because that's would the be way hilarious like them. imagine if in the writing process you gave your script to somebody and then they rewrote it for you instead of you yeah. doing the actual writing <laughs> that's literally what's happening here eric hasn't bothered to point at any of deborah's work by showing it to us yeah exactly that's the other thing like that too Jesus. yeah I haven't heard him, like, the enthusiasm he gave for uh, Joe Bennett. I'm not hearing it here about uh, Dubra. The legendary Joe Bennett. Come on. And Yaira number one is the first book that you get to see that true impact. He's helped take Deborah's art to the next level. And in my opinion, this is... But I thought she was already good. So you see, told me she was good. You, yeah. Yeah, you said she was good. And now you're like, oh, but Kanan took it to the next level. Well, show me what, where she was and where's this next level. Show me something. Uh, you shouldn't have mentioned the Canaan Kane White thing. Even if it was true, even if it's 100% true, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have, have mentioned yeah. it. You should have kept that. That should have been the, you know, one of the things you keep in your pocket and you keep to yourself. It is the best work that she's ever done. And I'm... And that's not... Well, that's not saying a lot, right? Like, if I did a, a lot of shitty work, right, and I did one good thing, like, hey, it's the best work she's ever done. Yeah, oh, man. God, poor Dub, bro. She, yeah, her career's been ruined now. <laughs> So you hired Kanan to teach other artists? Why would he need to teach Deborah if she's so good? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's... This whole video, this is a bad video. You shouldn't have done this. Standing on that. That isn't an exaggeration. She really captures the beauty of Yaira and has a true knack for capturing, like, expressions. She's not also just simply... Okay, so he's showing some artwork and... Hold on, let me, let me go back here. No, that's not what I wanted. Why am I... Damn it. Hit the wrong button. And I'm standing on that. That isn't an exaggeration. She really kept. All right. So this is this is the artwork, right? Look at this. Why why is her headband on top of her head? It's just sitting on her head like a, like a hat. It should be across oh, yeah. her forehead. Like the way it squeezes like in, right? Yeah. It, it looks like her head. Like if this is on her head, then her head turns really. She got like a pinhead, right? Because look how this is around. This is around the forehead, and you got more. Obviously, there's more head here, and the hairs come out of the head, right? But the way the hairs are coming, it's like the hairs are coming out of the head here. So this is where the head ends. So, so this this headband is now at the top of the head, just barely sitting on top of her head, which has now become pinhead. It's like the headband got loose and then just, you know, pulled yeah. the hair with it all the way up. Yeah, but it doesn't make no sense because where's the rest of the head? Like Yeah. The way that the way the hair is coming out, the hair should be coming out here. Uh, so this is badly drawn. This got to get fixed. This uh, shirts don't do that uh, unless she's got a shirt that has like a boob pocket, <laughs> right? Yeah. I, I, under, I understand you want to show uh, the boobs, right? But uh, it's like we bullied them into showing boobs, and then they do it the wrong way now. Yeah, I was just going to say, there's a way to do it, and this isn't it. Because this, this just looks like a pocket. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a cone head. <laughs> uh, that's a form-fitting hoodie, damn. <laughs> it's not, not even form-fitting, because it's like... This should be pushed up. Uh, there, there's a way to draw this, to, so you could have this. Like, her boobs are popping, right? Uh, but none of this is pulled. Like, this, this should be tight here. Uh, this should be pulling up like there oh, should God. be I'd no laugh. i'd die laughing if i knew that this was uh, once a uni boob but then they erased it and then made boobs boobs 
Yeah, like, like this shadow follows this, so it's like weird. Like, this shouldn't be like that. There should be one shadow. There shouldn't be a light source. Uh, all this scritchy scratchy is kind of dumb. Uh. Captures the beauty of Yaira and has a true knack for capturing light. And this is the same thing here. Why has she got weird shadows all over her boobs? All this dark shadow here. To try to, they're trying to emphasize her boob to make her boob pop out, but it looks weird because he's got these like lines. The lines, yeah. What the hell is this? I don't know what these wavy lines are. Is she like psychic powers coming out of her head? Is there like a mural behind her, maybe? The funny thing is, that this is supposed to be a piece of marble, right? They already yes. put the marble detail, like the you know, yeah. kind of photoshopped. They didn't need to draw these lines then. If they were going to do this, if they were going to put the marble detail there already, the marble texture. Yeah. Also, these glasses, they need a. a um, they look like there's no lens in them, right? Uh, and I don't know if this is a colorist issue, if this is a on her pencils but there should be a little at bit least a white line especially yeah, since that, her eyes are glowing you get that white line so you kind of so you know it's glass so you get that that uh your brain will interpret that there's glass in there yeah the way it is now is just like empty frames right also this i don't understand how this is like, is it a turtleneck it's not a turtleneck it's got extra but it's all bunched up like expressions she's not off awesome. uh this is terrible uh this guy looks like a like a gorilla or a, some kind of monster it's like the hulk yeah his face is too 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 scrunched up not good we got the same problem with the headband here because uh, because you can see the forehead's coming in right oh yeah the cone head problem again so you end up with a cone head again because again here is the uh, where the hairs are the hair should be uh, stopping at the top of the head, but since they keep going, that means that this is not the top of the head. Uh, Wouldn't the cop be panicking and not go mad? I, I don't know. Why is he angry? The, <laughs> I, I don't like to assume what's going on because I don't. I guess it depends on what he's saying, right? Yeah, what's preceding this, or yeah, what is what's he saying? Or he's probably uh, saying, "Motherfucker, come here! Damn it!" Yeah. Yaira's here. We need What's taking you long? Yeah. What's taking you so long? Probably. We'll see. Yeah. Also, yeah, that shoe's backwards. That... <laughs> you see that little indent right there on the shoe? Oh, yeah. See how, it, see how it's straight, and then you got an indent, and it's got the same indent. So that means she has uh, two right feet. Two right feet. Yeah. Or two right shoes on. Also, uh, her butt cheek. It's one ass cheek is bigger than the other. It's, well, it's, it's like not. It's, it's weird. Other. Okay, so this is her leg, right? Her leg is outstretched. This ass cheek shouldn't be like this because this is her leg, so this should be pulling the ass cheek. And, I, and trust me, I know this. I've studied asses enough. Right? See, so you get this ass cheek because you got the bend, right, where her leg is bent this way. But because this leg is straight, this should be pulling the ass cheek this way. So it should, yes. this ass cheek should be longer. Yeah, it shouldn't. It's like they drew an ass, and then they drew legs on afterward. Because like I this think she was doing is, another pose, and then they decided later to let that leg extend backwards. Yeah, that's probably what the it left is. Leg. Yeah, I bet you this leg originally was over here this way, and they're like, no, no, put the leg that way, and they moved it without fixing the ass. And then she has the same problem with the boobs, where like the shirt has this boob pocket. <laughs> Oh, Yaira. So just simply drawing what the script says, she's conveying the story. <laughs> Her cheek cramped up. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Her butt is lit weird too, yeah. Again, note, don't show comic to Tony. And you waste an entire page of action to have her grab a wrist. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's the whole page. I think he's only showing... Partial panels? I don't think this is the whole page. I think this will be like three panels within a bigger page. Like this, I don't this I don't think is the whole page either, because you can see there's stuff down here. So it makes it look like it's the whole page, but it's not. Also, why is her hair 
Okay. Why is it flowing that way if she's wearing a hood? So presumably, it's not. Looks like a mind flayer now. Look at that. Yeah. (laughs) The only thing, the only assumption you could make is that there's be wind going this way, right? Going to the left. And it would have to be really strong wind to get all that hair to get almost 90 degrees, right? You've picked it all the way up. Uh, But the rest of this would also be, there should be more indication of other things being moved by the wind, like this right here. The clothes, yeah. Yeah, the clothes should be pushed over, everything. Uh, But it's like only her hair. I guess they're they're like, what do we do with her hair? They should have just bunched it up or just put it falling, right? Like right here. This hand, I don't know what happened here, but her hand is now deformed. Look at that. Every every single de- uh, detail on the drawing has all these lines except that one hand. And this hand is, for some reason, I can see her knuckles, which make no sense because this is her other hand, so it should be the palms that I see, right? And not the knuckles. It's like this is a fist, but that fist is pointed the wrong way. At least it says police and not poli, so, you know, getting better there. The way the um, the word police is typed in, look. Polite. You see it? It looks strange. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it's Photoshopped from somewhere else. It, it does. You know what? They might have traced a car. It, it, must, have, it must have been poli in the beginning, and then they said, oh, let's fix that. Well, this one right here is missing the P. Right, so you can see where the P is right next to the O, right? In this drawing here, there's no. Oh yeah, the position is wrong. Yeah, there should be a, like a little bit of white, indicating that there's a P behind this guy's, that there's P behind this guy's <laughs> shirt, but there isn't. Uh, I know. Yeah, she had on the the girl on the ground by the wrist ninja. Yeah. Uh, damn, that middle panel is bad, but good lord, that top panel is abysmal. Uh, rookie mistake. I don't think it's even rookie mistakes so much as they're they're just phoning it in. Eric doesn't know what he's yes. looking at. Uh, I guess Cannon White just doesn't care, right? Because I would definitely not be showing even if this is the best, right? Obviously, you show your best work. So if this is the best, then I'm like, oh man, it's gonna be it's gonna be rough, isn't it? and enhancing it, truly driving the point home. So please head over to Riververse.com slash Yaira. You can pre-order Yaira number one. We have plenty of items in this campaign and plenty of bundles that will help you save a lot of money. Yeah, I want me a t-shirt, Yaira shirt, a poster, or Dakuman's cards. Lord Dukuman cards. I, I would, that uh, trailer did not, you know, those Tom Three reasons did not convince me, Eric, why I should buy. And he did the Deborah Dirty. Yeah. I don't. Maybe that's their best work, and that that's terrible. It's, oh it's God! Uh, all right. So the Horseman art reveal. Th- this is another because I love looking at art. Being not an artist, it's great to look at other people's art and just tear it to shit, knowing that there's nothing of mine that you can tear to shit because I'm an artist. Oh, well, you have an artist right under you. So. Yeah, but you could. It, it's not going to hurt my feelings if they say your art's bad. That's all I'm saying. Again, he wouldn't be facing such harsh backlash if he approached this whole yes. deal humbly. Well, it's not even harsh. I'm not being harsh. Okay, look at my review of Niobe. Look at my review of anything else. Uh, I, I'm being the exact same level that I always am, right? If I see something, I'm be like, yeah, that's a mistake. Yeah, that's no good. Yeah, that's, that's bad. Right? The story could be great, and it could just have some really crappy art to it. Uh, uh, Finbar uh, will send me those stick figures, Frog. I need blackmail. Never. Never. Uh, that trailer was supposedly updated. was not. It was the same. Yeah, I keep hearing. Someone kept saying, oh, they updated the trailer, and I kept looking. I'm like, no, they didn't. They didn't. It's the same. Yeah. I think what well, really happened is they have to take it down for a while, and then... I think they you know, unpinned it. That's it what I think again. they did. Yeah. Uh, are you going to talk about salvage? We already did. You missed it, Brosidon. We talked about it. We went over the little announcement, and I'm confused about it. All right. Joe Bennett, Chuck Dixon, art reveal. 
horse man. What the hell is that music? Is this like a... This is me. Batman? 007. Da, 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 da. Yeah, double, that's what it is. Da, 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 da. Okay, so, there, so right off the bat, okay, it's not a terrible design. However, okay, this is more of a robot design, okay, uh, where you would have this, like, um, headpiece. Oh, God, now that you point it out, it looks like his eyeballs are all the way to where the helmet is. <laughs> Yeah, because that, that's how a robot, like if you were going to build like a robot, like one of those gooding bots, right? Because this this makes no sense. Okay, if you're going to be a superhero, right, you put a helmet on, you're going to put a helmet that covers your ears, okay? You're going to have ear protection. Uh, it's going to protect you from loud noises, from gunshots, uh, you know, uh, clanging. Uh, it's going to protect you uh, when they get in close, right? When these ninjas are in close... They could just stab you right in the ear because pff, no protection. Same thing with your neck. You'd probably cover. How are the neck. ninjas looking more like horsemen than the actual horsemen? No idea. But you know what I'm saying? Like it makes no sense. Like you go through all this trouble and then like, oh, no, no, because like, Captain this. America, you see, he has his ears exposed. Is that what it is? <laughs> I wouldn't be not, surprised. Not horsemen. Guardians helmet from DC. Why was he redesigned again? Pff, who knows. Robo eyes. Yeah, exactly. He looks like, uh, you know what robot he looks like? Uh, what's the stabby robot from uh, Futurama? Uh, what the hell's a stabby robot? What the hell's a stabby robot name? Come on, help me out. Uh, I don't I don't remember anything from Futurama, but he looks like one of those reject uh, RoboCop 2s. <laughs> Roberto. He looks That's like... In RoboCop 2, you know, the, the the bad experiments they had. Like, if you remove yeah. the helmet, you'll end up just no, seeing a No, skull. you know what he looks like? Uh, okay, Star Wars. Remember the doctor robot in Star Wars? Oh, yeah. He's got that same bottom uh, face thing right there. A bit of General Grievous, too. You know, we don't need the music because it doesn't add nothing. So we just turn the music off. That way we could talk over the trailer. So he's got. Why does he look? Jesus okay, why does Christ. this look weird? What's up with his thumb? Okay, so every like... page is a rabbit hole again. <laughs> it's not even a page; it's the same. It's the same panel. Okay, so this this, I don't see a trigger, right? So where's the trigger at? Because this is the building, right? This brown is the building in the background. His finger is inside the trigger, but there would be a little. A uh, metal piece. There should be a metal piece right here where he's pulling down on, right? Where he's going yeah. to pull down on. Uh, the actual trigger. He's inside the trigger guard, but there's no trigger for him to pull. This finger is awfully short, too. Uh, you would, Your finger should be all the way in there. Because like, this is the tip of his finger, right? So either he's got a really short uh, first finger... You know, or the lines on that finger make his... Uh finger look like it has a nail for yeah. some reason yeah, it's because it's light it right looks here. like it looks like a pedicure not a glove look at that i mean a manicure yeah so i don't, I don't know why he's got this uh, these fingers are all the same size uh, which they sh probably shouldn't also does he have an extra finger okay what's this okay so th this is one two three four and then whatever this is Yeah, they forgot. They forgot to draw the uh, the trigger. Grumpy saying, "This is all." Oh God! Yeah. So no trigger, but also this like extra bit of hand makes it look like a, a second, like a, an extra finger. Because one, two, three, four, five. He's got five fingers here plus this thumb. This thumb is sitting weird. Because uh, Miracle Molly, if you're talking about the background uh, being AI, probably I wouldn't be surprised yeah. because the. If you see the rest of the drawing, you, you can't see where the vanishing point is. It's like five different wrist? vanishing points at the same time happening. And where's his wrist? Because this is... Okay, so here's his thumb. It goes around. We have this line here. But then this is his arm. So then why is this? What's this connected to? What's this blackness, which is throwing everything? There should be no blackness here. What the hell is this? We got snow in front of it. Because this is like... This looks like the same blackness as this, right? Like the um, the holes inside the 
the metal grating, right? That's that one anchor, the new anchor they got for Joe Bennett. He's just messing everything up. Like this, even like this, whatever this this part of his, why is it higher up? Like, that's not how arms work. Like, it's like really fat here. And then like, Zombie boy, you know how you deal with hands and feet? Um, you know, draw circles for every joint. Hand looks shot down. Hands are hard. You just you just do, uh, what's his name? Uh, you follow uh, Rob Liefeld's advice. And you just put rocks <laughs> and, and other things in, in the way, right? It's like right there would the be a big stop is... sign right here. Right, this looks like a Rob Liefeld job, though. <laughs> there, there's a lot of hiding going on. Uh, he says, uh, no, it's four fingers. And the, the palm behind the gun is throwing it off, uh, throwing off because it's, it's colored wrong. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, that, that little bit of palm here. But it shouldn't be extended this far out. This bit of palm should, if it was cut off here, because if you look, this is connected here. And because they didn't ink this right, it's not closed. Uh, right here to make a, a solid finger so it's open and this is connected and then you have this so it makes it look and then this right here uh, it's just badly drawn the gun looks nice with no trigger but it looks nice right. wait, wait, wait. go back go back don't 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 okay we got this light why is this snow okay so this snow I don't, there's no sense of depth depth here, right? Because there's different size flakes of snow, big old fucking globs of snow. But I don't know where each one is in relation to the rest. Is this snow? Why would there be snow inside the light? That makes no sense, right? Like, because snow doesn't fall oh, yeah. inside lights. So it's completely lit up, which is like it's right under the light, that one too. But they don't fall that way. But these are falling sideways. Uh, but these are falling this way. Like none of the snow is even falling in the right direction. Like, like how's this snow falling sideways, right? And then this one's falling this way. Down. One mistake also is making the snow detail, like adding shadows to the snow. You didn't really need to do any of yeah. this. Also, the the snow in the front. Uh, there should be no snow in the front. If okay. you're going to put snow, don't give them outlines. Just no. Make them there should be no. There white. should be no snow in front of anything. That too, yeah. Uh, what you do is you put the snow in the back, and then your mind fills in the gap, right? It's like when you're in a snowstorm, and the way you see it, uh, you see all the snow in, in front of you, but you don't actually see the snow that's like directly in front of you. Like you're not blind because there's snow falling in front of your face. You kind of see through it. Uh, you give that like a little blur effect. Uh, like this is a huge fucking chunk of snow. Uh, where are these guys running? Who knows? Bam! Uh, I don't know what I'm looking at here. Top of his head? Bottom of his head? Oh no! What Why the hell is this? Why are you showing off the civilian? <laughs> What the fuck is this? Oh my god, this is terrible. Oh, Why would you happened. don't zoom in on this? Yeah, look, okay, so this is this is his jacket, right? That's his jacket. So that's presumably yeah. where his where, why is his wrist way on the top of his jacket, but then also blended into his jacket, but also this weird finger here and his thumb and it's like he's got like a his weird face. claw hand. Look okay, at but at nose. least he got the glasses right. You see how these glasses have the little light? And it's got the little fog effect, so they look like there's something in there, right? Look at his nose. He had the anime, the anime triangle nose at first, and then all of a sudden, right. he actually has nostrils right under. And I love the I love the solid tooth. Uh, the buck teeth. Tooth. <laughs> buck teeth. It's just one teeth. It's just one tooth. <laughs> uh, why is the blood spurting that weird way? Who knows? That looks like I drew it. idea why why eric why are you subjecting us to this God, this train this is right like... here is going nowhere there's no track if you look at the full drawing this is like him in the warehouse all over again with the drone footage yeah. just zoom in on everything hold on let me go back there was a come on show it oh, look there's snow effects right too wonderful so you see this uh train 
Uh, there's no platform for the train to go. It is literally going to head for these people. Uh, so they're, they're on, on the platform. Over. Yeah, they're on the platform waiting for the train. So there should be more tracks and stuff here. Uh, like if these presumably... ninjas put them there to get run over, maybe they should be running instead of just yeah, cowering, staring around. Yeah. <laughs> But it's not because this is a platform. They're clearly on a platform because you can see like stairs in the background to get off. So whoever drew the train fucked up because there should be right here. There should be railroad tracks. Right where this guy is like leaning over the guardrail. Presumably there should be railroad tracks because the train would stop. People would get off. You'd get on. Uh, because we have, we have elevated tracks here in Chicago. So I've seen those kind of platforms. I know what he was going for. There it is. Uh, he just oh yeah, Mr. Right. Negative from the first Spider-Man. Yeah, the Chinese demons, right? They look like. Uh... Hmm. Oh, I. This would crack me up if these are a ripoff to the hand. Oh, you know it's gonna be. It's going to be, yeah. Look at that snow effect, baby. Look at that. Like as if we didn't have enough snow. Yeah. As if I couldn't see uh, poorly already, and then he shows. Look at a horse man in a completely different costume. Eric July obsessing over the the weirdest shit all over again. The uh, warehouse, seems the like kitchen, he's trying. Yeah. this drawing, the car, the, I saw him landing on the car. The foot, wait, that's taken. Yeah, It's not the foot clan, it's the, the ankles. They're ankle biters, that's what they are. They're the ankle oh, biters. that's a good name. <laughs> oh, man. Obviously, this is all in good fun, all in good faith. Um, yeah, I haven't got Yaira. I'm not looking forward to getting it. Obviously, I will get it at some point. Uh, and I guess I'm going to have to get the Ripazine uh, so we can uh, discuss salvage. I think Eric is just putting out more product knowing that I'm going to have to buy it. He's like, what else can we get Tony to buy? I know. Let's put out a Ripazine. <laughs> it's like, fuck, I got to buy that too. Uh Hey, we got to show art, and then we got to critique art. Yeah, why is he in a... Uh, why? He still used the cover with a completely different design. I don't know. People on, on uh, the Ripa fans are like, oh, you don't understand. He, obviously, he's going to have a different costume. Uh, he's going to have several costumes. Like, Iron Man has several suits of armor. Like, yeah, not not in the first issue. It's like Iron Man had the classic gray Iron Man um, suit for, I think, two issues. Then he paints that suit gold. So it's the same suit, he just painted it. And then I think like 10 issues in, he gets finally gets a new suit. Uh, and then they keep that one for a little while, right? The, same thing with Spider-Man. Spider-Man's had several suits, but it's not like first issue. Like We just run through like four or five fucking suits. Uh, the ankle biters. Uh, you should make ankle biters for Fabulous Frogman to fight. But we're the I'm ankle to biters. to do the George thing and say, share my screen. Share my screen. See, this is how you do hands. Like you, you make sure you don't mess them up. Just draw the joints, easy, and then draw on top of them. I'm not going to show you the rest of the drawing, but I'm just saying, you know, this is what to start with. Now I know. I can't even draw that good. Uh, that's way better. It's way above my skill level. Uh, but I'm excited. Uh, but a lot of people, because they're, you know. I don't know. It's probably they have a timeline. They they want to finish it quickly, so they just draw the outline and run with it, right? They yeah. can't bother to build the drawing from scratch. That's what I'm guessing is really happening. I'm guessing or, he's you know, on a time they drew crunch. the first time, and then they fucked up, and then they have to overcorrect. That's also another scenario. Maybe I, th I think they're on a time crunch, and they're just like, um, just phoning it in, like fuck it. Just go for it. Uh, let me see. So, the same man says that's the one he has by Avengers One, right? No, uh, by Avengers One, as you can see here. Here's the uh, comic. I have the reprint of this, but uh, this is from eBay. This armor here, this is the armor, uh, the, the gray armor that he paints on uh, gold, and then he adds his antenna on it. Uh, fantastic issue. <laughs> I'm describing you, wizard. But you have to. Like, I think your drawings will improve if you, you know, draw the outlines first. 
when you build a skeleton and then do on the, you will see it will improve. Oh right, yeah, yeah. Uh, I I like uh, personally I like the silver centurion armor. I like the uh, it's like a whitish silver and red uh, Iron Man armor. That and I like the one with the points, the pointy armor uh, with a, the head has like the little fucking points on them. I think that one's best. What about you, TJ? What's your favorite Iron Man armor? The silver one. The the one they call the War Machine. <laughs> yeah. All right. You guys are going to love Gar of Pangea. Uh, it is going to be um, PG-13 pushing, pushing close to that... that, that you know, T, upper T rating when the, uh, if we ever get to the full launch. Um, but in this book, it, it's, uh, I don't say dumbed down, but it's like, I made it as simple and as um, family friendly as I could make it to put it in the uh, Awesome Amphibian Adventures. I think it, it gives you just enough, just a taste, right? You go, oh, this is, this is interesting. What's going on here? Uh, same thing with uh, the Jersey Blue backup story. You're going to get just a taste. You're not going to get everything. You're not going to get an origin story. You're not going to get, uh, you know, an in-depth profile of the uh, character. But you're going to get a little taste of it. You know, maybe you're interested. Maybe you're not. And uh, un like Eric July, I'm going to let you guys decide if we go forward with these things. Um, but definitely going forward with uh, awesome amphibian adventures. One, two, three, four, five, a hundred. Um, I got them all planned out. I'm like the Saskas. I'm on issue 100 already. Uh, but those of you who are worried, uh, there were some people originally worried, I don't know if you remember this, TJ, that we were going to come in, take a bunch of money, and just run. Right? Uh, it's not my plan. My plan is to make an ongoing comic book uh, that we could keep releasing. Because right? I want people to read. Because I have stories. Uh, you might not know this. Uh, but I've wanted to write comic books since I was a kid. Uh, I just never... I can never draw. I had no talent for art whatsoever. Uh, but I always had stories. I always had stories I wanted to tell. At one point, um, my friends and I, we got together and we were going to do uh, a manga. Right? Because we're you know we were teens, we we're really big into into anime at the time, and we had this idea. Uh, and like all edgy teens, it was going to be a, like an angels and demons type thing. Because I don't know what it is about like teenagers, but whenever you're a teenager and you come up with an idea, it's like oh you know it'd be yeah. really cool. If there was like angels on Earth and like they fought demons, it's like, like yeah, Spawn like... <laughs> or Evangelion. <laughs> yeah, that's probably why teenagers got drawn into that. Uh, Wizard says, if you were to read my story, would you want Origins right away or later on? It depends. You can do a story where you have Origins later on, and it can work. But you have to know what you're doing, right? Uh, you can go into the middle of a story. You can start off with a, a character who's already established into the world. As long as the rest of the world is acting accordingly, right? And then you can hint at origins, and you can you give uh, clues, right? And then that'll get people interested in, oh, what is his backstory? You can do it that way, or you can do it where you give a abridged origin, right? Where you're like, this is, uh, this is TJ Laser. He's a crazy vampire from Transylvania hunting the night. And then you just go into the story, right? You didn't give the whole origin. You just kind of told who he is right at the beginning. Like Batman, the original Batman comic was like, this is Batman, this is Bruce Wayne. His parents got killed, and now he, he trained uh, to learn how to fight crime, and now he's fucking Batman, right? That was it. That was literally it. Now, you didn't have the whole crime alley scene and all that. They all came later on, right? Uh, so you could definitely do an abridged origin and then, uh, you know, flesh it out later. I'm starting with Origins in book one. So, so I'm writing my main story out issue by issue. I have the team together and I explain, but the origin may not be shown for issues. Yeah, that, that could work. Like I said, it all depends on how you handle it and how it's done. Uh, so there is 
no right way to do it. There's just a lot of wrong ways. How's that sound? That sound plausible, TJ? That sound very like a wise. Yeah. No, you're, you're on something. Mm-hmm. And um, here's the thing, right? Like if you say when you when you design a character, right? It's still salvageable. Going back to the word salvage, <laughs> salvage PI, like what I did with Wizard of Wordplay's uh, Viking. You can still work with it, no matter what. Like even uh, the Ripoverse characters, as abysmal as they are, there are workarounds. But some of them have to be huge workarounds. That's all. Yeah, you you start in what they call in media res, uh, right? Look look at the Guardians of the Galaxy game. That game starts you off with the team together, and through the game, uh, you 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 find out how they got together and why they're together. They're already like three missions deep into their, like, um, teaming up. But when you start that game, and you kind of learn as you play how they got together. Uh, And that works because you're familiar with the characters, you kind of know who they are uh, already from other sources. So it's a lot easier to just jump into something, right? Uh, It's like Spider-Man. I could just throw Spider-Man into, like, you could start a Spider-Man movie with no origin, and he's just fighting crime, and you just kind of already know because it's the zeitgeist, right? Uh, balls deep, just go balls deep. And, yeah, what are we discussing? Uh, Wizard was just asking uh, about origins and characters and storytelling. Uh, show some people Avengers first. Show some people Iron Man first as an experiment. Uh, you could do that. Uh, but if I were to show someone, should it start basically on Avengers one or with the solo movies first? Uh, there, like I said, there is no right way. There is no right way. If you Start with Avengers, and you build the story up in a uh, good enough way, in a interesting enough way, where people are like, oh, I want to know the backstory of Iron Man. I want to know the backstory of Captain America, right? Uh, again, you can have Avengers, because in Avengers 1, they kind of, in the dialogue, you kind of know what, what's going on and who they are, and you, you get hints of their origin. Right? Not many people have watched the previous movies. Before the Avengers, like they they probably watched one movie or two, not many, yeah. and then they just, just watched wondering... the Avengers. They were already up to speed. Yeah. I was just I was wondering, <sighs> excuse me, because if I were to have someone read it, if the origin of each person should be first for easier read, if the origin is integral to this again, it all comes down to the story you're telling in that moment, right? Uh, if you're telling the story of their origin, obviously you got to tell their origin, right? If you're telling this, the time, uh, like if I if I were to say, okay, hey, hey, me and my family, we went out uh, camping, right? You don't need to know anything about my family. You don't need to know about my, my dad, my mom. You don't need to know about their origin, how they met. Uh, you don't need to know about my brother, or, you know, what he's into. You just need to know they're related to me and we all went camping, right? And that's what I've told you. And then I tell you the story about us camping and, uh, you know, the shenanigans that, that went on during this camping trip, right? You're invested in the story of the camping trip. You're not invested in, in this, their backgrounds, right? Because I'm going to give you enough for you to, to, to understand who they are, how they belong in this world, how they uh, fit with other characters, how they fit into the story, into the structure, and everything like that. So you don't need origins. As long as that's not the story you're telling. Right, and I think that's the best way I could say it. Uh, it's like an action story about defeating some villains. You don't really need to know the origin of the team, yeah, or the origin of the villain. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what: in, in Fabulous Frogman, right, he fights Nightmare. I've, I've said this before: he fights Nightmare. There's no origin for Nightmare. You don't need to know Nightmare's origin, why he's there, anything. You just need to know that he's committing a crime, and Frogman. Is going to stop him, right? He's going to try to stop him. That's it. Because that's the story I'm telling. I'm telling the story of Frogman. And then he's just the obstacle in the way. Right? So, uh, again, it, it all comes down to what you're telling, what the story, what the theme, what the purpose of the actual story is. Uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to be really, not vague, but like loose. Because I don't, I don't want to be like, these are the exact things you have to do at this, right? I want to, okay. There's a wiggle room, right? 
And you could even, you could tell an origin story or give an origin and then later on retcon it and be like, actually, that guy was lying. Right? He gave his origin, but he was actually lying because he's really a bad guy undercover or something, right? You could, there's all ways to do things. Like when what they did with the killing it. joke. Yeah. <laughs> Batman, the killing joke, right? So, uh, like I said, there's ways to play with things. Um, and speaking of the killing joke, right? Everyone says the killing joke is a great story. And I was thinking about this the other day, right? Killing Joke is a great comic, right? It's a fantastic comic. Uh, but I was thinking, like, Killing Joke only works because of all the other comics that came before it, right? Like, you couldn't, you couldn't just write the Killing Joke without all the, the history of Batman, right? Like, it has to stand on the shoulders of giants, so to speak, right? And I think... Uh, so when people are like, hey, that first issue, right? You put out a first issue and it's not that good. Or, you know, even even Isom, right? Isom 1 and 2, not that good, right? But Isom 50 could be fantastic. And it's only fantastic because of all the other stuff that came before it. Even if the other stuff is crap, right? As long as there's enough meat in the other stuff to build up to something in issue 50 to have a fantastic story, right? Even Watchmen. Watchmen is a fantastic fucking comic. But without superheroes as a genre, you can't deconstruct them, right? You can't deconstruct something that doesn't exist. So you have to have years and years of superhero comics in order for the Watchmen comic to make an impact, right? Uh, Brosidon says, am I doing it wrong with all the origins? No, there, like I said, uh, there's no right way to do it. It depends on what you're telling uh, what exactly. Kind of story yeah. I was saying as much. Like, if the stories are good on their own, keep them. It's fine. Basically, my first issue is the big team up where they meet each other for the first time. So if you read it, you would still get an idea about everyone because they're new to each other. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you could. Like I said, it... so here's the thing, like right? League, you're, of you're giving... ex- League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, right? They just. Yeah. But you're giving... they're already a team by now. <laughs> You're not giving me enough, is what I'm saying, okay? Because they go, okay, six guys meet each other, right? I need the dialogue. I need to know how they interact, right? I can tell you that that can work, but it can also not work. It all depends on how, right? You have to stick the landing. Like, okay, so they all meet each other. That's that's you doing all the little flippies in the air, right? You did three or four flips. Now you have to land. That's the dialogue. You have to stick that landing, right? Uh, so they talk to each other and int- introduce and such. Yeah. So, uh, and again, if the dialogue is stilted, if the dialogue is over expositionary, if you're just like, hi, my name's Bill. And here's my like entire life history and all my powers, right? That, that would be bad writing. Right. But if you're like, oh, who's that guy? Oh, that's, that's fucking Bill. I, I hear he can kill a man with just his thoughts. You're like, oh shit. Look at Lee. You know what? It's a good movie to look at. The hell's that one? Not League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. The one with uh, with Ben Stein, Ben Stiller, Ben Stein, Ben Stiller. The oh one. shit! What was it called? Mystery Men. Mystery Men. Yes. Mystery Men. Mystery Men. Look at That's Mystery Men. That's a good Men. one. Way ahead of the its way, time. The way they introduce the characters, like when they're like, oh, that's the Blue Raja, and they're talking about like they're building them up with each other, and they're like, oh, here comes the bowler, and like and they're like the bowler, that's stupid. Like, no, she's got the bowling ball possessed by the spirit of her dad. Right, like they're telling each other about the other characters, and so they're giving you the exposition. But it's working in the dialogue, and it's working in the the dynamic that they don't know each other, and they're trying to introduce Shit. each Even other. Even the um, James Gunn Suicide Squad was good for that. Yeah. Like Mystery Men is fire. Something it, it is. Mystery happen. Men is underrated. It is underrated, yeah. Like you have a scenario, something would happen, right? Um, let's say, what's his name, Idris Elba's character sees a rat. It's like, oh, shit, I'm afraid of rats. Why are you afraid of rats? Because my father used to punish me by putting me in a barrel full of rats. Like, in uh, something would happen, and it would trigger somebody revealing something every now and then. You could also do that. Sandman says, Tony's exposing his leftist power levels, referencing Alan Moore. <sighs> Alan Moore is such a dick. He's like, I really love these characters. I hate this movie. Like, why, why do you keep licensing your shit out <laughs> and saying you hate the movies? Shout out, TJ Laser. Shout out. Shout out. Yeah. So I'm excited. 
I am here for the long haul. I said it. I got tons of stories, tons of ideas, tons of characters, tons of things. I've been. You can tell, even building... in my case and Finbar, we've always wanted to draw comics. I think that I've told this to a few people, including yourself and Finbar, Tony. Like, the only reason why people like Eric July and the FMT and all these jackasses are now allowed to ruin indie comics online is because none of us are standing up. Like, nobody is showing their talent. But now's the chance. We'll correct that mistake. Well, all of us together. That's how, like, we, we need to show these people how it's really done. Uh, Frogman does not have a female counterpart. There's no frog lady. Uh, Wizard says, I will leave it I will leave it as I was going to and just do the full origins later. That's fine. Uh, you can do that. Uh, Wizard, uh, oh, excuse me. Don't be afraid to show people your, your writing. Uh, I, I was, uh, you know, even I talk a big game, right? And then even I was like a little like worried, oh shit. And I understand how it is. Like I sent people the script and I was like, oh fuck, I'm, you know, uh, they're going to shit on it. I was like, oh man, if they just shit on this, like, uh, you know, all, all the all the game I've talked, all the, the, the build up, and then if they were to come back and be like, oh, this is just crap. It's just garbage. Tony, what the hell are you thinking? Uh, I think that would have killed me. Uh, but you, you got to put yourself out there, right? You got to put yourself out there. Uh, and it'll make you a better writer. They'll, you know, they'll give you constructive notes. You take the notes in. Uh, oh, you think the art is bad? I've only been writing a year. But you get better. You get better. You learn. And again, you give people uh, your your story. They read it. They give you the feedback, the constructive criticism. They say, "Here's what I don't understand." Uh, as a new writer, uh, when you're a new writer, a lot of times you write things in a way that you understand them, but other people don't, right? Because you know the character. You know what they're doing. You know why they're doing it, their motivations. You know what the setup is, and you're like, you know, you think you're being clever, and you're like, oh, yeah, because this is going to pay off this way, right? And then someone else reads it, and they don't understand it. They don't get it. They don't have the same uh, knowledge that you're working from. And so it's really helpful when they read it, and they go, hey, I don't understand this. This is why I don't understand it, and this is... Then you could take that and go, oh, yeah, okay, I see that. I understand that. Again, I got feedback, and I was like, yeah, you're right. Uh, I, I looked over my script, and I was like, man, this is uh, bad dialogue. Let me fix this. I was like, let, let me spice this up here, and let me, this isn't snappy enough. And so I think the second draft is way better, leagues better than the first draft. Um, and even then, I, I sent out the second draft to a couple people, and when I get that feedback, uh, while the scenes aren't going to change uh, the dialogue is definitely up for uh, changing if need be uh, will Sturgis have a rat pack? no uh, probably not it's going to be a wild card, it's a wild card. Yeah. I think um, right. because there was this one scene in a Spider-Man TV show or something I forgot Like where it was like uh, literally a pack of mutant rats it's like oh shit we're not touching that let Sturgis be alone. He's miserable anyway. We'll keep him that way. <laughs> uh, I'm basically going through and writing every issue in a novel format. Uh, so the story is written to show people instead of waiting issue to issue. Yeah, that's one way to do it. Uh, uh, if he gets one, he needs to put LG. LG could be his trainer. His long well, there you go. Buddy. <laughs> uh, but yeah. As I was saying before I got sidetracked, I was saying all that to say this. Guys, I'm here for the long haul. We're here. We're in Comicsgate. We're in CG uh, to create comics, to make comics. I'm not here for a fast buck and then leave. No, I want to make comics. I've always wanted to make comics. I found two guys who are fucking phenomenal. Okay, uh, Finbar, TJ Laser, uh, phenomenal artists. Uh, Potion Sword Run. Great colorist, right? I, I couldn't have lucked into a better situation with people who are passionate about comics, who are good at fucking art, and who are trusting me, right? Because these guys trust me to write a story that they're then going to draw, right? They could, they could at any moment, you know, Finbar could say, fuck you, Tony, you know, I, I don't like you, Frogman. I'm going to do my own thing, right? Uh, but he's not. He's like, I'm working with you. I'm trusting you. You write the story. I'll draw it. Uh, same thing with TJ Laser. Uh, and uh, I appreciate that. It's phenomenal. It's, it's a great feeling. Um, 
and I got plenty of stories, plenty of ideas. Um, it's not, it's not like a, a uh, rip reverse, right? We're not gonna, you're not gonna get the first issue of Frogman, and he's got like sixteen characters in there, and like, uh, no, it, it is a complete story. You, you get the origin of Frogman. Uh, you get him fighting some villains. You get some action. You get some exposition. You get some world building. You meet the most important characters in the Frogman comic, right? You know, in, in Superman, you got Superman, Lois, uh, Jimmy Olsen, Perry White, right? You meet those characters right away. Um, you know, you got Aunt May for Spider-Man, you know, uh, Gwen Stacy. What the hell is his name? <sighs> Fuck. Uh, uh, Harry Osborn, right? Flash Thompson. You meet those characters right away. I know some people are thinking Mary Jane. She doesn't come until later. She doesn't come until later when uh, uh, Anna Watson, uh, her niece, Mary Jane, shows up uh, because Mary Jane comes to live with Anna, which is a neighbor of the um, Parkers. And Anna Watson is friends with Mae Parker. And then uh, Mary Jane shows up and face it, you just hit the jackpot tiger, right? That scene. That's later on where she shows up. But, you know, when you go into the first issues of these characters, these comics, you meet the main cast. And we're doing the same thing here, right? You're going to meet the main cast. These are the, the people that are going to be recurring characters in the Frogman universe and the Frogman comic. And um, so you're going to get familiar with them. You're going to get introduced to them. You're going to see who they are. Uh, the way I've written them, uh, according to everybody, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they're just all lying to me, but apparently they all feel different. They all feel like individual characters and not just me in six different bodies, right? Uh, so again, hopefully you guys like it. Hopefully you guys like the jokes. Um, Nerdette said it is like Spider-Man meets Shazam, right? She said it's fun, it's fast, um, jokey. Um, DJ Eric's liked it. Uh, other people who have showed it, they've liked it. Oh yeah, one thing I appreciate about Nerdette is she actually noticed that uh, at least Frogman is different, you know, origin-wise and everything. Like he's not. Uh... Like some people say, a ripoff of Cyber Frog, well, or that, the that Frogman of Marvel. <laughs> she, she actually wrote that. So, so when that was her she accusation, gave... she's the one who started that shit. By the way, like no, she's, she gave she's me the, the one who started the saying that this was a ripoff of Cyber Frog. She gave me the notes, and she said one of the things I worried about was that it was going to be like a Cyber Frog knockoff. She yes, it was completely different, completely different from Cyber Frog. And I go, yeah, because it is. It's different. You guys Zombie can watch um, mm -hmm. Tony's match with her on Tekken to see. Like she actually says it out loud. Yeah. I got beat uh, a lot. I think it was the lag. There's 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 lag online, and that's not, not good. Uh, but yeah, so uh, hopefully you guys like it. Hopefully you guys enjoy it, and you come back for more. And you go, hey, we want more of this. We want more comics. We want more stuff from you guys. Because I have so much. And again, you're going to get, in, in the first issue of Awesome Amphibian Adventures, you're going to get 26 pages of Fabulous Frogman. You're going to get his origin. You're going to learn about him. You're going to see some action. You're going to learn about his uh, you know, main cast of characters. We're going to give you one page of Gar of Pangea. You're going to get a nice little scene there, kind of a setup. Uh, you don't learn too much, but you're going to get enough, like a taste of Gar. You're going to get a one-page fake ad, which is like a... It's going to have inside jokes, but it's going to lead to something, right? I promise you, I put nothing in this comic. Everything in this comic has a point, okay? You have to trust me on this. I already told TJ. TJ can verify that there's a point to even the fake ad that I'm yeah, putting it's crazy. in the comic. Okay? Like, even the most pointless detail, and it ends up uh, bringing you somewhere, somehow. You'll just have I, to wait I, and see telling you the pepe sylvia boards at the house there's like six of them there's so much i've ran out of red string there's so much red string going around here guys uh everything i do has a point uh and the backup story the jersey blue backup story uh, again uh, you're gonna be introduced to this character you're gonna see him in action and hopefully you guys will be interested enough to go hey we want more of this we want that origin right because i'm not giving you an origin of jersey blue you're just gonna see him in action he's gonna uh, do something, uh, fight a crime, stop a crime, right? And you're going to get that. You get a little taste of him again. And then if you guys want more, we'll give you more. 
If not, then we just move on to the next thing. Uh, I think every issue of Awesome Amphibian Adventures is going to be the same way. Uh, you're going to get a main story, uh, Fabulous Frogman. You're going to get a, a fake ad or something, uh, maybe a little gar, and then a like a four-page backup story. What's up, Jimmy? Hola, Colas. <laughs> Speaking of Jimmy, don't forget Sunday, Nerd Hangover, right? You go out party Saturday night, and then Sunday afternoon, you get that Nerd Hangover. Uh, so we'll be there for you to comfort you. Uh, mine's a binder. I got to update that, too. Yeah. So... I got ideas, I got stories, I got characters, I got things I want to tell. I also got a super chat from Red. Now we can stop pretending that we like Tony Yeh. What, what the hell? This this must have been when I was gone. You guys yeah, that's why you were chat. gone. There's another one he gave recently. Yeah, there's this one. And it says, I'm back. Worst episode of Biggest Problem in a while. Oof. Vito's booty must have not hit. Must not hit. Damn. That's a... Uh... Team player oh. Vito. Team player Vito. With all the team players. All right, let's. Everybody is asking about the potions colors. Wait, let me show them. Here, I have the, the frogman. Yeah, this. So this is potions work. The coloring, at least. Yeah. And look, look at the eyes. Zoom in on the eyes. The eyes, yeah. I like what he did with the eyes. See. Look at that. I like that it's yellow, but then you got the little orange bits in it, and it's almost like a salamander. It's almost like a character in and of itself. The more amphibian, like yeah. Like the way I color little... is just flat, you know, because I just want it to look like a cartoon, but the way he does it is yeah. different. All right, let me give you a little economics of Mannix. High risk, high reward, the economics of Mannix. Part owner, oh lord, it's the ballsy move. Some people not Mannix. Sing my rap, lats, phonemics, what pain it, not any. Are you digging my groove? I gave you 40%. You're a cold. Mannix. I gave you 40%. You got a chance to get rich. I gave you 40%. Love you no the no bluffing. I gave you 40%. So right now you get nothing. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, you get nothing. There's too many people jump on Watchmen like it's the end-all be-all. Watchmen is great for what it was, but I blame the lazy people who worship it for what's gone wrong with comics since. Ooh, that's a good point. That's a good point. You know, that, that's what's plaguing all of comics, if you ask me. Like, uh, it's just media illiteracy. Everybody is illiterate. And catch Nobody, this you... Everybody just watches the same media over and over again, and they don't watch new things. Yeah. Uh, and catch this. If you're closer at the orange eyes, you'll have a seizure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so after potion doing this i i said i will i'll get my hands off of shading i won't do shading anymore i'll just let him do it because that's what it done Oops. and grumpy says uh ah yeah. uh, uh, the mystery men without the flaming carry yeah and he they does were the supposed shine, right? to like the, the like a shining because he's an amphibian right he has his his skin has to be glossy yeah he is an amphibian. Uh, so there was supposed to be a flaming carrot movie, but that never got that never happened. Uh, but the Mystery Men uh, obviously came out of the flaming carrot comic. <clears throat> they were a spinoff of Flaming Carrot, right? Yeah. Or is it the yeah. other way around? No, they were a spinoff from him. Crazy. Uh, so yeah, big things are happening. Uh, I'm excited, and the comic's only going to be fifteen dollars, seven fifty for the digital. Uh, we're going to maybe have some um, limited edition covers, right? That's the plan. And that'll be a little more expensive, but not too ex We're not like $50 covers, $60, $100 No, it's going to be like $25 covers, right? $15 for, for the um, generic. I don't want to say generic. Not generic. The uh, standard. Even that just sounds bad. $15 for the uh, mass-produced one. How's that sound? The not limited edition one. And then it'll be like $25 for a limited edition one. Seven fifty for the digital, and um, I'm thinking, and and I haven't run this by my guys yet, but I'm thinking uh, we put on the mass-produced cover, so everyone knows that that's the, the first print run. You put a nice little gold, like first print edition on the uh, campaign ones. Because it's still going to be available to purchase outside of the campaign, obviously. So, I think a first edition uh, little stamp on the... Uh... That way you guys are getting a little something different uh, for the campaign. Uh, One Inch Bicep says, since he's blue, is he poisonous? He is. 
He has a paralytic and a hallucinogenic uh, goo, slime, ooze, frog juice, if you will. Uh, it's more like a cane toad, though, because it's hallucinogenic. It's not really uh, poisonous, as in instant death. No, yeah, it doesn't have no, no killing because it's it's family yeah, friendly. No so killing. It's gonna, it'll, it'll make you a little little wanky to banky and a little paralyzed. So it'll be all good. Now I start working on my free to all comic and then get made when it looks like crap and give up. Should be a fun week. Uh, I think it means get mad. No, no. Uh, mad, not made. Yeah. Hey, if it's free, uh, you'll probably get less uh, heat than if you charge somebody and it was crappy looking, right? Exactly. Yeah, it's a good start. Yeah. And again, if and you, we're if always here story... to help. Like I'm, I'm always here to help, Wizard. You know that. I've said that before. If your story is good enough. It, uh, the art being crampy won't matter as much because you'll be invested in the story, right? And then who knows? Somewhere down the line, you just get a better artist. And then, you know, that's what they did with One Punch Man. A lot of webtoons do, does that. Uh, does Frogman come in GTO Red or Galaxy Purple? No, no, just the one, one color, just the blue, Grandpa Blue. Just, that's it. Uh, Anything else we need to discuss? Uh, we went two hours. We were gonna. We were, it was gonna be a half hour show, and then I actually got my internet back. Uh, oh, it became a uh, full decent stream. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so I have, you know, a binder full of characters, full of ideas, full of comics. It's gonna be a whole universe, and we're gonna do it uh, the correct way, and. We're not going to charge you too much, right? We're gonna, it's going to be nice, uh, easy. Because the plan, the plan, the eventual goal is to try to... And I've said this before, right? So it's not, not a secret. But to try to get a comic out you know, every three months, three to four months. And uh, eventually, um, you know, we all have Finbar doing the awesome amphibian adventures. And we'd hire somebody... To do one of the other comics, uh, that, you know, that spinoff. And with that said, Jersey Blue, the backup story, is being drawn by a CG artist. I'm not going to tell you who it is yet. We're, we're saving that announcement closer to launch, but it is a CG artist. Uh, we got a, a we hired an artist and a colorist to do the Jersey Blue comic. So you're going to get a, a unique. It's going to be a little different style. And if that um, comic is well received and people like Jersey Blue, that artist is going to be offered. I already told them, I already uh, discussed this, but they would be offered the job. You know, first refusal, right? So this is what we're going to do, I think, going forward. Uh, we'll have Finbar do the main story, and I'll find an artist uh, within Comicsgate, uh, an up-and-comer Someone who maybe maybe has done nothing, has done no work, has no resume to speak of, but hey, they, they draw some nice pictures and uh, we want to give them a chance, give them a nice four-page story that they can sink their teeth in and point to and say, hey, here you go, guys, look at this, this is what I'm capable of. If they do a good job, if we work well together, if we mesh my style of script writing and their style of drawing and, um, you know, and you guys like their work and you like the character... Then I would definitely be like, all right, let's hire you to do the book. Let's hire you to do that that book. Because uh, again, uh, part of what we're doing here is, is a platform for people to promote their art. And part exactly. of what I'm doing is a, is a platform to give people opportunities. Right? Again, I said this with Eric July. I said, hey, he should have been hiring some up and comers, some hungry, talented people. And um, that's what we're. I'm gonna put my money where my mouth is. Right? And so that's what I'm doing. Hire a lawyer for contracts. Contracts? <sighs> Who needs contracts? We're just shaking hands here. We're all buddies. We're all pals. Don't worry. Yeah, protect yourself from getting robbed. Yeah, I know. Why are you going to bring business stuff into this? I'm trying to have fun. I'm trying to I'm trying to be nice and have fun. And, and you're over here, like, getting all lawyery and, and, and businessy. I mean, these are, like, in the... <laughs> Goofy basic characters. There's really nothing to die over, right? <laughs> That's late. If these, if we were doing something like huge and mainstream, maybe we should be worried. But no, 
Nothing and I'm in that pile of names on the bottom on like an old napkin with a coffee stain that says last resort, last resort, like no money. We need an ash can for copyright. Uh, nah, wizard, come on. Uh, I, I actually have something in mind for you, wizard, uh, that I think you would be perfect for. But it is, is a thing that's far out. When I say far out, I don't mean like crazy, like, oh, far out. I mean like far, like uh, further along in the timeline. But definitely going to be something. Sorry, y'all, I'm still behind. I just got the economic semantics. <laughs> what about the warehouse you own? I'm going to have a warehouse inside a warehouse. I'm going to be double warehouses. Um, but yeah. So hopefully everything goes according to plan. And in a year's time, we'll be back here talking uh, about this huge expanded universe and all the, the employees we have and how Tony lost it all because uh, he didn't sign contracts and a 56K warning. He'll be like, see, told you. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it'll be good times. Uh, anything else, TJ? Anything I missed? Anything I didn't think of? Oh, that's about it. Oh, we uh -oh. went smoothly despite the snowstorms and shit. <laughs> also, <clears throat> I'm a comic book seller seller of comic books right so when it comes to campaigns there's not going to be t-shirts and, and, and all kind of extra shit uh, for you guys to buy it's going to be comic books that's it say car ramrod <laughs> i love that fucking movie dude oh man um what the hell is that super troopers it's one of the that would be one of my desert movies super troopers is fucking fantastic it is the I think there's a three movies, three movies where I can say I sat and, and listened to the uh, commentary. Super Troopers is one of them. I listened to both commentary tracks for Super Troopers, and it is just as good and entertaining as watching the movie. So it's like three movies because you can watch the the movie, you can watch the one commentary track, and then the other commentary track. It's fucking fantastic. Love that movie. Uh, Leader Cola. You want a leader cola? Uh, all right. So, yeah. Giving people opportunities, building a platform to promote people, being drama-free, creating a universe full of unique characters and awesome adventures, uh, family-friendly. Uh, also, uh, there's going to be some books that will be uh, not family-friendly. Uh, and, uh, again, this is something that I haven't run past the team yet, but fuck it, I'm gonna, I might as well tell you guys. Uh, there are going to be books... Because I have ideas for books that would be not related to the Frogverse, right? To the Frogman universe. However you want to phrase that. So it would be like standalone things that are like their own thing. Um, and uh, hopefully, hopefully this all goes good. This all goes well. And uh, Black Shogun of Hard Arlem. Yeah, like Black Shogun <laughs> would be its own thing, right? Uh, the cat got your tongue hentai is going to be sick. It's going to be oh, crazy. No. Uh, They'll put cat and hentai in the same sentence. <laughs> cat girl got your tongue is what is going to oh, be. Oh, no. Uh, no, so it, it's going to be good. It's going to be good, hopefully. Uh, or uh, I'm being totally overly ambitious, and I'm going to just come back and be like, wow, no one bought our comic, and we all suck, and... Uh, Everyone's gonna be like, let's remember that one stream where Tony was having these grand ideas and then <laughs> none of that panned out. Who knows? Right? It's gonna be interesting either way. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll always be here promoting comics and artists. So Tony expanding that his comic change. selections and not warehouse. Uh, Tony might just make it. Yeah. Um, and don't forget, uh, awesome amphibian adventures. Uh, our tagline is better than Dante's Inferno. Don't forget. Never, never forget. All right, everybody. I'm glad you're here. 84 of you. Uh, I guess go over to Ethan's stream. I think he's he's doing a trash cast, Friday Night Trash or something, probably. Uh, I got to be a businessman, yeah. Yeah. All right, everybody. Love, peace, booty grease. We out this bitch. <laughs>